Ready? Yes, Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين وعلى أصحابه الغر الميامين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين We begin as, as we always do in the name of Allah We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his immense blessings upon us and we ask him to send his peace and blessings upon his last and final prophet his family and his companions and those who follow his way until the end of time um, Jazakumullah khairan for, for joining myself and uh, joining this um, this webinar. Uh, I know it's late, it's 11 p.m. Uh, but subhanAllah, perhaps perhaps this is one of those actions that, you know, when we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the Day of Judgment, we'll be able to testify for ourselves in front of Allah and say, Oh Allah, that although... We were prevented and we couldn't because of the current situation. We couldn't come to your house and we couldn't meet at 11 p.m. We, we tried as much as possible uh, to engage in dhikr and in your remembrance, even if that meant, you know, sitting in front of our phones or in front of a computer um, after an entire day of being home and probably already sitting in front of the computer, whether it was for work or for other lectures or to hear recitation. But perhaps this is one of those actions that, we understand that it's a it's a good deed, but we won't understand the value of it until bef- uh, until we stand before Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and we ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala uh, to place this this gathering, this brief gathering, on the scale of our good deeds on the Day of Judgment. Um, I was ax- asked to speak about uh, maximizing our Ramadan in isolation. Uh, before I speak about maximizing our Ramadan in isolation, you know, just, just take a step back. I think, um, you know, a little over a week ago. Many of us, we were excited about Ramadan beginning, uh, although we understood that this Ramadan would be very different. But we listened to a lecture here or there, and we tried to motivate ourselves that, you know, okay, well, this is the cards that we have been dealt. This is our current situation, and we're going to try to make the best of it. And, you know, the days have passed, the nights have passed. Um, Tonight, I believe, is the um, ninth night of Ramadan, Tomorrow will be the 10th night of Ramadan, which essentially means that one-third of Ramadan has, has passed. Um, and I'll, I'll address something very briefly, and I don't know if this is everyone's feelings or, or kind of ideas or concerns, but it's been expressed to me by a few people, so I'll just address it. That um, because, you know, we, we entered with excitement, perhaps we realized it would be different. But now that we're into it and almost one-third of the way done, we're realizing this is perhaps a little more difficult than we thought. It's not the same experience at all um, that we have felt before. There was a level of sweetness that we used to feel and a level of enjoyment in, in the gatherings and taraweeh and iftar. And perhaps we've we've missed out on that, right? But realize in that difficulty, in that pain that we feel that this Ramadan is not like the others, in that pain, there is ajr. In that pain, we are being rewarded from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it's a sign. It's a sign from us that we're trying, O Allah, and perhaps some of us, perhaps some of you are making it the best Ramadan ever and you're enjoying it like you've never enjoyed a Ramadan before and you're making the best of the opportunity, but perhaps some of us are struggling and we're feeling that that pain like why is it like this i'm not sure if this ramadan will actually be the same now with 20 days and 20 nights in front of us but still realize in that pain in that feeling in that sadness there is a reward for us because the prophet sallam he tells us that there is no difficulty that the believer goes to goes through whether it is fatigue or sadness um, or, or any type of stress, or even the pricking of the thorn, right? Except that it's it's an expiation for our sins, right? Uh, so realize even the difficulties that you may be going through, whether they're just difficulties that come about because you're trying to, your best to stay home and shelter at home. There's an expiation in all of that, you know. Um, just uh, right after iftar, actually, right after iftar, I broke my iftar, I prayed maghrib with my family, and I've had a very very long day and. <laughs> Um, interestingly enough, I, I, I was doing something and I, I, I misplaced my phone, right? And I spent about a good, 
a good 30 minutes just looking for my phone, just, you know, going from room to room, shelf to shelf, going through everything, wondering why we have so much clutter and so much junk and just 30 minutes just spent looking for my phone, right? And I'll tell you that the first 15 minutes of it was, oh my God, this is such a waste of time. I'm so tired. Like, you know, why was I so stupid? Like, why couldn't I just put my, my phone somewhere and, what, what, you know, what am I doing? 15 minutes, I'm like, oh, my, I'm not going to find it today. I'm just not going to find it today. Right? And then I just had to kind of pause and say, you know what? This is what I've been dealt. This is what happened. Whatever. It's what Allah decreed for me. And I started making salawat upon the Prophet Sallam. Right. Just making started making salawat and just, you know, I, I, I kind of had to calm myself down. And, you know, eventually after about 30 minutes or so, I found it. Right. But my point in all of this is that sometimes we're given a situation and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just wants to see how we deal with that situation. Right. It's not necessarily about doing the most actions in that situation is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to see what type of patience we address that situation with, what type of shukr we come to him with. So that's the first thing. Uh, the second thing is also in terms of maximizing our Ramadan, even if we want to maximize our Ramadan, we have to have the proper mindset. And the proper mindset is only established uh, when we realize the, the blessing of Ramadan. Right? Um, you know, we, you might have heard, heard this hadith in the beginning of Ramadan. Someone might have mentioned it in passing. But really, for me, one of the hadith that really establishes how great of a blessing Ramadan is the hadith of um, the hadith that's narrated by the companion Talha ibn Ubaidillah, when he says that he saw um, he saw two men that had accepted Islam together from the same tribe, and one of them used to strive more and used to work hard and eventually died as a shaheed as a martyr in battle, and the second was just the average Muslim and he died a year later a normal death. And Talha says one day I, one night I went to sleep and I saw a dream. And he says, myself and those two men, we were at the gates of paradise. And a caller came out of paradise. And he began to call people into paradise. And the first person to be called into paradise was that quote-unquote average Muslim. And then the caller came back and he called in the shaheed. And then the caller came back and he told Talha that your time has not come yet, meaning you still have life to live. And when Talha woke up from that sleep, he began to narrate his dream to the rest of the companions. And the companions, they knew the reward of a martyr. So it perplexed them, it confused them. So they went to the Prophet Sallam. And the Prophet Sallam said, Min ayy dhalika What is it exactly that you're amazed? What is it that's confusing you? Why are you so amazed? Why can you not understand this dream? And they said, Ya Rasulullah. And once again, they were using logic. They were using logic. They said, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, so and so worked harder. He died as a shaheed. Why didn't he go into paradise first? Why didn't he have that virtue? Right? And the Prophet Sallam said, uh, that the second man, the one that lived longer, that um, isn't it so that he lived a year longer? They said, yes. They said, وَأَدْرَكَ Ramadan, And he lived to see another Ramadan? And they said, yes. They said, فَصَامَهُ وَصَلَّى كَذَا وَكَذَا So the Prophet ﷺ said, and because he lived another Ramadan, he fasted it, and he prayed in it, and he performed sujood, right? And they affirmed. So the Prophet ﷺ said, and this is so powerful, we just have to really internalize it. He said, فَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا أَبْعَدُ مِمَّا بَيْنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ He said, then I swear that the distance between these two men, both of them are in paradise, both of them are righteous, but the distance between them is greater than the distance between the heavens and the earth. Simply because he witnessed another Ramadan. It doesn't even say that in that Ramadan he prayed to Hajjud or he was worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 24 hours a day. He witnessed another Ramadan, right? That should be enough of a motivation for us to maximize this Ramadan, although we are in quote-unquote isolation. Now, I think we also have to realize that um, we have to realize that there are there are a number there are a number of people. I mean, I, I heard of people in you know in Muslim communities, whether it was in Southern California or uh, throughout the United States or in other parts who were affected by, you know, who, who got infected with COVID-19 and ended up passing away, right? And perhaps some of them were people that they thought they would live to see Ramadan. And even besides COVID-19, there are people who passed away in, in different manners in the past month, right? Few days before Ramadan, right? I always, always hear of a situation, at least one before Ramadan, where you hear about a person or a group of people who passed away a day or two days or a few days 
before the month of Ramadan. So we really have to understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He chose for us to live in this Ramadan. And it doesn't guarantee, although we've lived this one and we've lived previous one, it doesn't necessitate that we'll live to see another one, right? Um, you know, uh, I, this, is, this hits home uh, because perhaps some of you knew them, I knew them personally. Um, and, and subhanAllah, how, how the human mind is, we forget. But if you guys remember, um, in, I guess, late November, on October 31st, and then early November, we had a huge tragedy, tragedy in Southern California, where a young couple, a good friend of mine, Yusuf Uwayba, and his wife, Rayhan Dakhil, and their son, Umar, they were struck by a car, right? And they ended up passing away, and may Allah have mercy on them, and may Allah grant them the status of martyrs, Right? But I guarantee if you ask anyone in their situation that was at that young age, do you think you'll live to see another Ramadan? They would have said, of course, right? Now, once again, that's what Allah decreed for them, and Allah raises their status through that, right? But we've seen death over and over and over again, right? From California, from California, right? Even though um, not from, a, you know, just from a general perspective, uh, not talking about Muslims necessarily, but, you know, none of us expected Kobe Bryant to die, the way he died. All of a sudden, he's, he's attending basketball games and he's showing up and he's in the media with his daughter. And then all of a sudden, one Sunday, right, your phone starts going off, people start messaging you, you start seeing it on the news, and everyone's shocked, right? And subhanAllah, I remember, I remember one thing that, you know, everyone that was commenting on it, non-Muslims, they were saying that one thing this has reminded, of, reminded us of our own mortality, that we will pass away, that we will die, right? So we have to understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He chose for us to live this month of Ramadan. Uh, one, one, uh, one scholar, he says very beautifully in lines of poetry, he says, أَتَى رَمَضَانُ مَزْرَعَةُ الْعِبَادِ That Ramadan has come as a time for cultivation and planting for the slaves. Right? It's time we, we plant and cultivate. لِتَطْهِيرِ الْقُلُوبِ مِنَ الْفَسَادِ so that we purify the hearts from corruption. So fulfill the rights of the month of Ramadan in terms of our statements and in terms of our actions. And prepare your provisions, meaning prepare your good deeds that you're going to take with you to the hereafter. Whomsoever they plant seeds but they don't water them, Whoever plants seeds but doesn't water those seeds will suffer regret on the day of harvest. Now, the day of harvest is without a doubt the day of judgment. He's saying that Allah has blessed us with iman. But if we don't water that iman, if we don't try to cultivate it and grow it and take care of it, then we'll come on the day of harvest, which is the day of judgment, where people are reaping the fruits of everything, of all their hard work, all their sacrifice. He says, you'll come on that day, and you'll be in a state of regret. The month of Ramadan, we, we constantly hear that, you know, fasting was prescribed upon us so that we can attain taqwa. This, this, um, that was commonly defined as, by many of the companions as taqwa is that quality within a person where they remember Allah and they don't forget Allah, where they are thankful to Allah and they are not ungrateful to Allah, where they obey Allah and they're not disobedient to Him. But if we zoom out a little bit, we realize that Ramadan is really a time to renew and revive our faith, right? Allah, uh, the Prophet ﷺ, he says, إِنَّ الْإِيمَانَ لَيَخْلُقُ فِي جَوْفِ أَحْدِكُمْ كَمَا يَخْلُقُ الثَّوْبِ He says that iman, faith, our belief that we have within our heart, he says it wears out. Just like a garment wears out. Now think about this. You buy a piece of clothing, whether it's a pair of pants, a shirt, whatever it may be, hijab, and you love it. It appeals to you. You like the color. You like the fabric. You like the feel. You like the fit, right? And you like it so much you keep wearing it. And you keep wearing it because you keep wearing it. You know, you sweat. You get stains on it. It begins to smell, you wash it over and over again, right? And you keep wearing it. But you know what happens after some time, after a few washes, you begin to realize that it no longer has that shimmer. It no longer has that shine. Perhaps it doesn't even fit the same way. You know, it's, it's began to, to um, the, the cloth is getting a little worn out and you can feel it, right? You can see it. It doesn't have that same appeal. 
and you begin to think about replacing it or, you know, getting something similar to it, right? The Prophet he compares that to Iman. He says the same thing happens to Iman. It's natural. These are, uh, dare I say, there are, health, there are fluctuations that happen in our faith, right? But then the Prophet ﷺ, he ends that hadith by saying, فَسَلُ اللَّهَ تَعَالَىٰ أَنْ يُجَدِّدَ الْإِيمَانَ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ So ask Allah to revive and to renew that faith that is within your hearts. One of the, one of the primary steps of maximizing your Ramadan this year in isolation is consistently asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to revive the faith that He has placed in your heart, right? If we were to all ask ourselves, perhaps we've made du'as, different du'as for forgiveness and mercy, but how many times have you and I made du'a, Oh Allah, increase my iman. Um, oh Allah, revive and, re- and revive my faith, right? Think about a time, think about a time that you heard um, perhaps it was last Ramadan, perhaps, you know, you heard Sheikh Anas reciting, and it was Taraweeh, and there was a verse that he recited that you knew, or something, you just felt his passion, so it kind of, his passion carried over to you, and you felt it, and you just, you began to enjoy prayer, and you felt that sweetness, right? That's what you're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for when you ask him to renew and to revive your faith. You're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you that sweetness of faith, right? So one of the main steps I'll mention in terms of maximizing our Ramadan is literally just begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to revive the faith that is in your heart, right? It is so common, it is so common for Muslims to feel that, oh, you know, like... I. I feel guilty asking Allah for so much. Or they'll ask, you know, the Shaykh or the Imam, oh, make dua for me. And, you know, but the best person that can make dua for you is yourself. Because no one can make dua for you with the same passion that you will make dua for yourself. If you came to me in a desperate situation and you told me make dua for you, I'd make dua for you. I promise, I promise I'd make dua for you. But I could not put in the passion that you would put in in your dua. Because you were the one going through it. You were the one that wanted that faith. You were the one that wanted that sweetness. You really want to maximize your Ramadan? Beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow you to taste the sweetness of faith. And you, you know what? It might not come this Ramadan. But you beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and He will answer your request. You know, I was listening to, to, um, to a scholar today, earlier today, and he mentioned something so simple and it was, it was powerful. He said, on the topic of dua, he said that, you know, Adam alayhi salam, when we think about Adam alayhi salam, Adam alayhi salam was communicating directly with Allah. And Allah told him, وَلَا تَقْرَبَ هَذِهِ الشَّجَرَةِ Adam and Hawa were told directly by Allah, don't approach this tree, don't come close to it. It's not like, you know, they received it from a prophet and then it came through chain of transmission and then eventually reached them. No. Adam was told directly by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Adam and Hawa, don't approach this tree. Don't eat from this tree. What did Adam and Hawa do? They directly disobeyed the commandment of, the, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I mean, I mean, think about that. Allah is talking to you and telling you don't do something. And then you go and do it, right? Now Allah had a plan in all of this. Allah had a plan in all of this. He knew they would eat from the tree. But once again, focus on, they were told directly. And you know what they did? And it wasn't long. It wasn't like a, it wasn't like a long time after. Shaitan come to them, deceive, deceive, deceive. Eventually, they ate from the tree. Right? But, but although he disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly, Adam and Hawa, when they made a mistake, رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا Oh, our Lord, we, we messed up. We messed up. وَإِن لَمْ لَنَا مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ And if you don't, Forgive us and have mercy on us. We're, we're truly going to be of the losers, right? You and I, you and I, we've never, ever, we've never, ever been spoken to Allah directly. And we've disobeyed Allah before in our lives, all of us in some manner, in some fashion. But we've never disobeyed Allah. And this doesn't mean we're better than Adam, but we've never disobeyed Allah in the way Adam disobeyed Allah. Once again, this doesn't mean that we're, we're better than Adam. But I'm just saying, we've never done that. As Allah's never spoken to us And we've never been told a commandment Directly from Allah to us And, and disobeyed it right? So 
realize that Allah accepted their dua, He's going to accept our dua. So ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to revive your faith. That is so key to, to and I think I mentioned this in my khatira on Monday, ask Allah to, to make faith beloved to you, to adorn it in your hearts, right? The second thing about maximizing your Ramadan, each person has to take personal responsibility, right? You have to take the initiative, right? Everything that you see online, whether it's Qur'an recitation or a lecture or a khatira, all of that is supposed to simply motivate us to have active worship. You know, listening to a lecture, listening to a Qur'an recitation, there are, these are things, even this, right? We are rewarded for this. But this is what we can call uh, passive worship, right? It's, it's passive. Um, It's passive worship, right? Active worship would be you and I opening a copy of the Mus'haf or getting up and praying our taraweeh or some extra prayers, right? We have to take initiative and have our own personal worship, whether that's with our family or by ourselves, right? Do not become overly dependent and overly reliant upon passive worship, right? These lectures, these khatiras, these recitations, they're simply there to motivate us to push us, to inspire us, right? But really to maximize this Ramadan, we have to take the initiative, we have to take responsibility of ourselves, and we have to push ourselves to engage in active worship, right? Look, you know, I was told to speak for about 40 minutes, right? That's about 14 more minutes, right? But, and, I, and I'm the one speaking, so perhaps it's easier for me. But listening to this, Okay, perhaps it's easier. But after this lecture finishes, and opening a copy of the Mus'haf, and reading Qur'an for 15 minutes, when you're tired, that's active worship. But that is more rewarding, that is more powerful, because you're showing Allah that, oh Allah, I'm your slave, and I'm trying, I'm struggling, I'm trying, but I'm still trying, although I'm struggling, and I'm trying my best. It's not two hours, it's not three hours, it's a mere 15 minutes. But it still takes a level of certitude. It, uh, servitude. It takes that. It takes you to push yourself, right? So try to take personal responsibility. Take the initiative, and engage in active worship as much as possible. Um, once again, I understand it's a struggle being at home. It's been a struggle for me, as I mentioned in my khatira with three kids, and it's it's running around. You know, to be honest, it's it's 11:27 right now, and. Um, I, I've, I've had to lock the door. Two of my girls, I think maybe even the third, are all awake. Right? Everyone's awake right now in the household. You know, <laughs> it's chaos. It's chaos. But still, we have to find a way. We have to find a way. They're going to eventually go to sleep. Can I squeeze in five, ten minutes of prayer or five, ten minutes of Quran recitation? Do something by myself. Engage in some active worship. Um, also, uh, another huge thing in, in maximizing our Ramadan is not to diminish what it is that we're doing, not to diminish what it is that we're doing. What do I mean by that? We're doing actions, we're fasting, we're praying some, you know, we're trying to remember Allah, we're, we're listening to, you know, and perhaps some of us, we feel like we're falling short. You know, to be honest, I feel like I'm falling short this Ramadan, but at the same time, we shouldn't diminish that which we're accomplishing. Because what we're accomplishing, right, if we diminish it, then it'll kind of, we'll begin to lose more and more hope and, you know, even the things that we're already doing perhaps will stop. So the things that we're doing, whether it's just something as simple as completing a fast or praying Maghrib and Isha in congregation with our family, you know, or making a few minutes of dua when we wake up for suhoor right before Fajr, don't diminish what it is that you're doing. As you find yourself finishing each act of worship, whether it be small or big, Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving you the divine success to finish that act of worship. Because there are so many Muslims out there that have been prevented from that divine success that you and I have been given from doing even those things that we consider small, right? We might consider them small, but on the day of judgment, we don't know how much reward that they will reap. Perhaps last year, perhaps last year, there was a night where you prayed eight rakahs of taraweeh or 20 rakahs of taraweeh behind the imam, and this year there was a night where you pray two rak'ahs of taraweeh after an entire day of staying home and taking care of your responsibilities, but because those two rak'ahs were active worship and you made the effort, those two rak'ahs will be more powerful and more significant and more weighty 
on the day of judgment than those eight or 20 that you prayed in congregation. In terms of maximizing your Ramadan, as I mentioned, there's a lot of content online. Like, there's a lot of content online, and there's a lot of good content. I don't mean that in a negative fashion. Right? Masajid organizations all have gone online, and there's so many imams and scholars online and giving lectures and khatras. There's so much to listen to, and it's so easy to be overwhelmed. I mentioned this to many people in the beginning of Ramadan, and I'll, men- I'll continue to mention it, is find a series, find something that you want to go through a speaker that appeals to you, whether it's a short khatra every day, Sheikh Omar Suleiman, Sheikh Yasser Qadi, um, just just to name a few, right? Uh, whether it's the, the daily khatra, the daily programming that your masjid has, that the Lomida masjid has put together, right? Find something and make that your regimen. But that is something that I want to, you know, each video that they have, I'm going to go through it each day, right? Whether it's live or whether it's recorded and I go through it later, that's what I want to go through. Because if you don't, if you don't have structure, that I'm, then you're just going to jump from lecture to lecture. And you're not even going to finish one lecture. You'll, 10 minutes of this, 15 minutes of that, 10 minutes of that. And you'll either come out confused or feeling spiritually unfulfilled, right? So find something that you want to go through. Preferably something that is focusing on interpretation explaining the Qur'an or like a thematic commentary on the Qur'an, whether it's long a series or a short series, try to find something that you can go through from beginning to end throughout Ramadan, something that you feel is inspiring you that will eventually, as you finish that video, it will help you engage in active worship. Also, part of maximizing your Ramadan is, um, um, is self-care. You know, self-care. What do I mean by self-care? Taking care of yourself. You're not going to worship Allah 24 hours a day. You're not going to worship Allah. You're not going to worship Allah 10 hours a day. Forget that. You're not going to worship Allah. Uh, I mean, you're not going to worship Allah six hours a day, right? Um, you, you know, if you add, if you add literally our daily prayers, you know, each daily prayer, let's say, you know, five to seven minutes. Let, let's say seven, right? Seven times five. 35 minutes, let's add the sunnahs, you add all the sunnahs, perhaps just in your sunnah prayers, in your obligatory prayers, an hour, right? Just an hour. Let's say, and I'm really rounding up, let's say another hour listening to a lecture, right? Okay, that third hour, right? Whether it's taraweeh or it's recitation of the Quran, right? We might be in the day worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like at a maximum four to five hours, but that might even be stretching and pushing it, right? But still, within that, we have to have some self-care. Like, give ourselves some time off, enjoy time with our family, things that, things that we can do. You know, one thing that I, that, that I found very, very um, personally helpful was just going for a walk every day, going for a 30, 40-minute walk, right, uh, taking my family um, or those of them that wanted to join me, taking them for a walk. And subhanAllah, it just kind of gives you this, and not doing anything, you don't listen to anything in your ears, just kind of walking and enjoying and looking around, right? And everyone's different. Some people have young kids, some people don't. But just kind of getting out, right? Um, you know, when, when we had this whole shelter in place um, before Ramadan, I made it a point, you know, just my, my girls, they were going crazy in the house. So we were going for a walk, like, you know, for about 40 minutes, an hour every day. And then Ramadan started, you know, I got kind of like neglectful about the walk, although I needed it myself. And then I noticed, like, my girls were going crazy, and that them going crazy was affecting my ability to have my own personal time and worship and this and that, right? So I was like, okay, we need to implement this, this for my own self and for their self-care as well. So engaging in self-care, whether it is doing a hobby, cooking something that you've been meaning to cook. Um, some people enjoy cleaning. Some people enjoy cleaning. Hey, dedicate some time to cleaning. Uh, dedicate some time to reading a book, whether it's Islamic or, you know, has to do with some other subject, right? Some time for self-care where you give yourself some time to kind of regroup, you give your heart a break. We find there's a statement of um, Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu along the lines of, you know, basically the need of having some type of fun, having some type of enjoyment where you give your heart a break in the day, right? You're just doing something that you enjoy. So doing some type of self-care, whether, it, and it might even be just, you know, reaching out to a few friends that you haven't been able to see for the past uh, how many weeks it's been now, and just, you know, communicating with them, whether it's family within the United States or abroad, doing some video conferences and doing something fun that you will enjoy. And I think it's very, very important that you have something that you do like that every single day, whether it's together as a family or on an 
uh, individual basis, right? Um, also, in, in terms of maximizing your Ramadan, right? Many times a lot of emphasis is placed on reciting Qur'an. It's very important. Obviously, the reward of reciting Qur'an is immense. Uh, but, um, but, and without a doubt, that reward is great and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful. But really, we have to look at Ramadan as a spiritual reformation. It's literally a boot camp, right? It's a boot camp. And the curriculum is the Qur'an, right? So challenge yourself that... I want to study the Qur'an this, this Ramadan. And when I say I want to study the Qur'an this Ramadan, I don't mean the entire Qur'an, right? I want to study portions of the Qur'an. Perhaps some of you have only memorized a few surahs. Falaq, Nas, Ikhlas, Kawthar, Feel, and one or two more surahs. Okay, that's fine, right? But listen to a lecture, listen to a lecture on the tafsir of those surahs. So that when you recite it the next time in prayer, whether it's in tarawih or your obligatory prayers, you can feel the surah. You can understand what it means. That you can stop after every ayah and you can be like, okay, I know what this means now. Take some time out to study the Qur'an, right? And you really have to challenge yourself here, right? Because you really have to go after this, right? But we have to remind ourselves of how important and how, um, how vital this is to our own success, to our own faith, and to our own prayers, that we cannot go through the rest of our life and the rest of our prayers just reciting things that we've memorized that we have no idea what they mean, right? And I'm not talking about a simple translation. I'm talking about, you know, if you do a good search of YouTube, basically, especially like Juz Amma, you can find a tafsir of the entire Juz Amma by, by a few different scholars. Um, so making it a point to study the Qur'an this year. Once again, that doesn't mean you have to dedicate, you have to dedicate even an hour a day, right? If you find an hour lecture on Surah Al-Feel or Surah Al-Nas, you, you can split it over two days, you can split it over four days, 15 minutes a day, right? But at the end of the day, but at the end of the day when Ramadan ends, at least you'll understand what that one surah means. So challenge yourself to study the Qur'an this Ramadan, right? And there's so much, there, you, and, and you guys already know, there, there's so much um, that is out there, right? Um, I, I mentioned, uh, you know, um, self-care, and, you know, part of self-care is, like I mentioned, staying active, right? And then also, and this is, for, it's 1137, this is the last thing I'll mention, is set manageable goals. Set manageable goals. Set goals. We need a routine. We need goals, right? And strive for those goals, right? Strive for those goals. But once again, set goals that are manageable, right? Perhaps it was your goal. It was your goal to recite the entire Qur'an yourself this Ramadan. And perhaps now nine nights in, you realize that that's not going to happen, right? Or it's too difficult. You don't have enough time. You're falling short, whatever the case may be, right? If you can, if you can do it, great. Do it. Push yourself, right? If you know you have the ability to recite, then do it. Push yourself, right? Push yourself, right? And it might be uncomfortable, but that uncomfortableness, you have to get out of it to, to enjoy to enjoy faith, to enjoy the Qur'an, and to kind of get to that next level. But if you realize, like, you know what, I can't do it, then some people, what they do is they quit. They're like, oh, you know, I just, I just give up. I just give up, you know. It's nine nights. I was supposed to recite nine juz by now, and I only have two. I'm just done. So by the time Ramadan ends, They've only done two just because they quit, right? No. Okay. Hey, it's not feasible. Let me reassess my goals. Let me see what I can do. I only can dedicate 15, 30 minutes max. Okay. Well, in 15 minutes or in 30 minutes, I can read 10 pages. Okay. 10 pages times how many days is left. This is my new goal. I'm going to reassess. I'm going to set manageable goals. I wanted to pray taraweeh with my family, eight rakahs, 20 rakahs, whatever the case may be. Um, I don't think that debate is really going on, by the way, this year in Ramadan, 8 or 20, because I really doubt, uh, you know, many people are paying, pr praying 20 this year, but if they are, then more power to them, and may Allah bless them, right? But, hey, you know what, I, I intended to, to, like, read and have this long taraweeh, and we had, these, we had these goals. You know what, it's not happening. It's two rakahs every day. Okay, so be it. It's two rakahs every day, but it's still two rakahs, and those two rakahs, have four prostrations. 
In each prostration, the Prophet ﷺ told us that never it, there is a time that you make a prostration except that Allah raises your rank through that prostration and forgives your sins through that prostration. So you know what? It's just two rak'ahs, but it has four prostrations. And each prostration is a means of your rank being raised and your sins being forgiven. So I'm going to reassess my goals and set manageable goals. But don't go through Ramadan without setting goals for yourself, right? Don't think, oh, you know what, this is great advice, this and that, people, I don't need goals, I'll just worship. No, everyone needs goals. Have a game plan. If you don't have a game, if you don't, if you don't plan to succeed, right? If you're not planning for success, then you're only planning for failure, right? Because we need, we are driven by that, right? So make sure you, you, you set manageable goals, right? And the last thing that I'll mention, and this is the last thing that I'll mention, is practice mindfulness. Practice mindfulness. Uh, what do I mean by practice mindfulness? Whatever it is that you're doing in the day, right, whatever small acts of worship or even great acts of worship that you're doing, try to do them. Try to do them with an active intention, right? Don't do them just kind of passively, oh, like I'm, you know, try to do them with an active intention, whether it's praying whether it's reciting the Qur'an, whether it's just making adhkar, right? Whether it's making dua before iftar, just whatever it is that you do, practice mindfulness in the sense that you're focused and you're locked in as much as possible when you're doing those acts of worship. Once again, those are just some steps to maximizing your Ramadan. Make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Set manageable goals. Don't diminish what it is that you're doing, what, what it is that you've accomplished, because whatever it is that you've accomplished is, is not small, rather it's big, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the divine success to, to, to carry it out. Stay active, stay active, uh, have some self-care, so have, have some time off, right? Stay optimistic, stay optimistic um, in the sense that, look, our current situation could be significantly worse. Right. It could be much significantly worse. Do I want the masajid to be open? Do I want us to do I wish that, you know, okay, this ends and we, we can all be together in the last ten nights of Ramadan? Yes. Yes. Do I wish that? Yes. Right. Is that is that look likely? Absolutely not. Right. But stay optimistic. There's a reason for this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He dealt us this deck of cards, He gave us this situation. Because in His ultimate wisdom, He knew that there was goodness in this situation for us. And he knew we could handle it, right? SubhanAllah, perhaps this is the Ramadan we'll look back at at the end of our life, right? And we'll tell our children and our great-grandchildren that, you know, there was this one Ramadan, it was like and unlike any other. And sometimes it is after you go through an experience that you cherish that experience because you look back at it and you say there was, there was gems and jewels and sweetnesses in that experience that, you know, you can't go back to again, right? Think about a time perhaps that you were in a very, very difficult, stressful situation, financial, personal relationships, whatever it may be, and that led you to, to make a prostration or to make dua that, that made you cry, right? And eventually you got out of that situation, but then you look back at those tears that you shed because of that difficult situation, you're like, there was a sweetness in that whole difficult situation, but I wish I could get back to that sweetness again. So perhaps Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us this moment so we can experience it and perhaps we'll end up cherishing it, cherishing it later. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to maximize this Ramadan. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to assist us and give us the ability and the inspiration in remembering Him, in showing gratitude to Him, and to worshiping Him in the best manner. Allahumma a'inna ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. We ask Allah to make faith beloved to us, to beautify it in our hearts, to make disbelief and immorality and disobedience hated and detested to us. Allahumma habib ilayna al-iman wa zayyinhu fi qulubina wa karadah ilayna al-kufra wa al-fusuqa wa al-ishan wa ja'alna Allahumma min rashidin. We ask Allah to make us of those um, that are able to fast from Ramadan out of faith, uh, in, in, with having faith in Him and hoping a reward for Him, and to make us of those that stand the month of Ramadan in prayer in faith and hoping for a reward for him. Allahumma ja'alna man sama Ramadana iman and wahtisaba wa ja'alna man qama Ramadana iman and wahtisaba. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept uh, whatever it is that we have done and to inspire us and to motivate us uh, to, to good deeds and to, to take to 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 take this Ramadan as a as a 
self-development for us and a, and a reformation for us and to come out of this with, with stronger iman than, than when we enter this month. Uh, once again, Jazakumullah khairan uh, for, for joining me. I appreciate it. I understand it's late and I apologize if I went over my time. Jazakallah khairan, Sheikh, as always. Thank you very much. You actually ended uh, just right on time. Um, I do want to open it up for folks that may have any questions. Um, everybody is muted, so if you do have any questions, please feel free to unmute yourself and ask your question or use the chat um, to be able to ask your questions, um, inshallah. So, Sheikh, until so people maybe figure out a question, I'll ask you a question. Um, any advice on, you know, those of us that have kids, um, how do we engage them also uh, as part of this uh, experience, if you will, right, to, to, make, to give them some optimism uh, as well? Any advice there? Um. <laughs> So, yeah. so I'll try to so I'll try to give us some advice, but realize I'm just you know it's a, it's a trying to figure one day it out. Some, yeah <laughs> just still trying to you know figure it out. One day something works, the other day it doesn't work, and it, and it fails miserably, right? Um, just uh, you know, and 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 this happened in, in the middle of the week for me that um, that uh, I I got really busy and I got stressed out and, and this and that and, and when that happened. Uh, and this is this was just in the middle of this week. It, it just caused a lot of chaos because I was stressed out. I was busy. Uh, I wasn't enjoying Ramadan. And and then you know I, I realized my wife told me she said you know like they just the girls they just they just need to spend time with you just quality time right. So I, I would say for those of you that have kids realize that that's your responsibility. You might be able to have less worship. That's completely fine. And you're being rewarded for taking care of your kids and and sacrificing. Now obviously you try to schedule in worship, but getting them to, to engage is just spending good time with them, right? You know, obviously they're not fasting, but sitting, um, having them make dua, you know, basically, you know, assigning them, okay, you know, we're about to break our fast in a minute. Can you make dua, right? And you're going to have to walk them through the process, right? They might be like, oh, I want this, or you're going to have to tell them what to ask, right? But trying to get them in the spirit of trying to empower them through that, right? Trying to get them to do it. When, when it's time to pray, um, you know, whether it's little girls putting their hijab on or the young boys having them, having them stand next to you. I, I mean, you know, every day we pray Maghrib as a family here, and it is, every Maghrib is a different experience, right? Sometimes, you know, today for the most part it was calm. The other days, like, all three of them are crying. It's a new experience, right? But you just got to, you just got to, you know, roll with it. You just got to go with it. It is what it is, but try to engage them, spend time with them, but talk to them, talk to them about Ramadan, um, you know, uh, you know, take, take some time out, maybe, maybe teach them about the prophets, right? Um, uh, you know, certain things that whatever, you know, uh, stories that, you know, prophetic stories that, you know, sit, sit down with them, read to them, give them time. Uh, make sure they're there when you, uh, you know, when you're breaking your fast. SubhanAllah, for, for me, every single suhoor now almost, I think every single suhoor, one of my girls has woken up with me unintentionally. She just wakes up with me. So we just, you know, we just we just eat suhoor together. And I joke and we tell her, hey, you have to fast. Obviously, she goes back to sleep, she wakes up, right? But engaging them, time with them and just reminding them that it's from above. And then, like I said, for those that have young kids, I you know, going for a walk really, really helps them get that energy out because it's difficult for them to stay inside the house. And then all with that and asking to put I don't see any questions in the chat. Um anybody else that has a question, uh feel free to unmute yourself and ask your question inshallah. Okay, don't see anybody uh, unmuting themselves. So, Sheikh, I think we're good. Jazakallah uh, And we will see you on Monday night, inshallah. Um, for those that, you know, uh, don't know, we, uh, uh, Sheikh Ahmed Billah will be with us at 9.15 on Mondays uh, on the same channel, if you will. So come join us. Um, and 
uh, participate, tell your friends and family about it, spread the word uh, of our daily program. It's, you know, usually it's only about 30 minutes of your time. Um, it's um, a, a, a good way for your family to kind of be together as well and uh, bring the community together. So do what you can to spread the word and uh, have more folks join as well. With that said, any last words, Shake, and we can call it a night. Uh, yeah, sorry, one, one last thing. Uh, you know, for those that are still on, it's okay. They, they depend on, the, you know, the, the Friday funds, the Ramadan funds. Uh, realize that although we're not attending, you know, Russia, there's still things that need to be paid for and taken care of. And the last thing that we financially that's on us there's no, the government's not going to come and take care of it they're not norma said they're not going to get any stimulus checks or whatever the case may be make sure you're donating to your message if you haven't been financially affected because of what's going on then it is your obligation to perhaps even donate more than you've donated uh, in the past and if you have been financially affected and if you can still donate then donate and perhaps Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove you out of financial so you, you support uh, the masjid inshallah Exactly. And they didn't tell me to make they didn't tell me to make that announcement by the way, but you know yeah, it, we did it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, inshallah. We will see you on Monday. Jazakallah for everybody that showed up. And may Allah reward each and every one of you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum